The remarkable popular movement in Egypt has for the most part been carried out in a courageous and peaceful manner. The whole world is watching how the president and the reconfigured government will react to the continuing protests demanding a radical change to a wide range of human rights. Um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights clearly lays down the political rights of the people, stating that the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government. Egypt's long-term record on human rights is a key factor in the protests. The population appears to be clearly rejecting a system that has deprived people of fundamental rights and committed a range of serious abuses, including widespread acts of torture. I believe the Egyptian government, by maintaining an emergency law for 30 years, has clearly shown that human rights have not been one of its prime concerns. The emergency law has enabled key checks and balances regarding human rights to be circumvented and abused by security forces and other state institutions. I was deeply concerned about the security vacuum that developed over the weekend after the police were withdrawn from the streets. This allowed free reign to looters and made the advent of chaos, which President Mubarak said he was keen to avoid, far more likely. It is unheard of for the national police to completely disappear like this. I believe there should be a clear investigation into why the authorities took the decision to expose the population to considerable risk in this way. I welcome the Egyptian army's commitment not to use force against the people. With hundreds of thousands of people gathering on the streets today, I urge both the army and the police to act with the utmost care and restraint. I hope the protesters avoid any acts of violence that might tarnish their extraordinary achievements so far. Today's march seems likely to be a pivotal moment in Egypt's transition to a freer, fairer, and more democratic society. I also call on the government to stop interfering with communications, internet, and transport systems, as well as individual journalists and media organizations, such as Al Jazeera, which are trying to report on the situation. People have a right to protest and freedom of information is especially important at times like these. I urge all governments, both in this region and elsewhere, to reflect on how the fact that in the long term, genuine and lasting stability does not depend on a ruthless security apparatus or a ring of military steel, but on the development of human rights and democracy. Stability cannot be approached solely through a security lens. This is a short-sighted method that, in the end, is bound to fail.